Go on, Lambos, who's first? Man, you're like a lead weight. You're heavy. Oh, there you go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So as you can probably see, this morning we've just had a little quick move around. So we've got all the cades all mucked out and put in a bit of a bigger pen for now as they just need a bit more room. And we've weaned them, so they're all on water, creep and hay now. They're all growing really well. That shine Eureka milk powder has definitely done them well. But the plan for today, guys, we're just gonna head up to the field where we kept the ewe lambs as I think we're gonna to have to do some harrowing just to sort the field out. So I hope you enjoyed it today, guys. If you do, please tap that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you enjoyed. Cheers, guys. Right guys, so I've just headed up to the field where all the ewe lambs slash ewe hogs, whatever you like to call them, were grazing and we moved them on Sunday. So that was the last video, if you haven't seen that you'll get what I'm on about. But there is quite a lot of muck in this field, they graze it off really well, as you can see they graze it fairly tight. But there is a lot of muck and the problem with that, if it isn't spread out properly and broken down, it can come up in the hay and haylage. So what I'm thinking, the plan is we're going to pop the harrows on and get this field harrowed out. Just it'll pull this dead stuff so you can see this yellow stuff in the grass here. It'll pull that out and allow all the fresh grass to come through nicely while spreading the nutrients of the muck out too. So that could be the plan. <whistles> Jace, where are you? Jace has gone for a run. We just have a wander up the field. They have grazed this really evenly and nicely. I did want them to take it fairly tight because there was a lot of dead stuff in the bottom. They've done it really well. And there's not too many weeds in here either. So there's a patch of nettles over there. But apart from that, there is actually not a lot. So we've just headed up the field a little bit just to get you guys a better example of what I was on about. So if we go down here, you can see all these clumps of muck and these are gonna be great to go back in the cell to get some natural matter back in the cell too. But the slight problem is they're in big clumps, so if you see that, that's not really going to do much. It needs breaking up so it can go into the soil, else they're just going to leave big clumps of muck on the surface. So that is basically what we're harrowing. And when you see later, the harrow basically breaks it all up and spreads it all out nicely. You can also see some of the fur that Dad's put on, so we put some artificial fur on here too. Hopefully to get it to grow and come back really nicely. In the past couple of years, this field hasn't done so well, but I think this year, just because we graze it a bit tighter than what we have in the past, it should come back a lot better. And hopefully with all this muck and fur to, it'll grow just as we want it to.
Right guys, so that is us underway with harrowing now. We've just finished the headlands, which is a little bit around the edge of the field, which we kind of do so we don't have to turn around on the same spot. But what you should have seen from above, guys, is there is a slight yellow tinge to the field. And that is because when the sheep were in here, they grazed it down quite far, so the plant wasn't very long, meaning that there isn't a lot of green left on the field. So what we're trying to do now, guys, is using the harrows, which are like little spikes, that whack the ground and pull out the dead bits of grass to just pull out any dead bits that the sheep left and didn't eat because this means that the grass can grow through better so that we have a better crop of grass as it grows throughout the year. And as well as that, as I said before, it just spreads the muck out too and just does a good job for the field overall. Um, it's a fairly simple job. We're just pulling metal through the ground to kind of rough it up. But I'll jump out at some point, show you guys exactly the difference between before and after it's been harrowed. So guys, to some of you, this may seem like a little bit of a tedious um, job, but I've said on the channel before, all these little jobs just add up to us getting a better grass crop at the end. So these grass harrows, they're doing their job, and like I said with the rolling two, each little thing that we do adds onto that crop at the end, and it could possibly mean that we get 20, 30% extra yield at the end, especially like I said before with the fertilizing, you're giving the nutrition that the plant needs to grow. With this, we're pulling out all the old plants, so all the competitors that the fresh new grass then won't have to fight against to grow. With the rolling too, all these little extra things just mean that we get a better yield at the end. So that is why we harrow guys and why we do all these little things to the grass. So as well as me harrowing today, we've actually got the spraying contractor here too. So on the farm, we do have a sprayer, but the bulk of the spraying we get a contract to do it just because um, it saves cost and it is a specialist job, which sometimes we just don't have the time to do. So John is here today with his big 24 meter Bateman. I don't know if it's his or they've got two as part of a company or the farm he works at. And he's here today and what I'm gonna do is just pop the drone up because we've never actually seen any spray on the farm. And then when it comes back down, I'll have a little bit of talk about what he's doing. I just thought it'd be a great opportunity for something that we don't actually see too often on the farm. those some epic shots guys when that sprayer is going it is absolutely going some it can get through land in no time i bet it actually takes more time to fill it up and get the mix ready than it does spraying itself like 10 acres 10 minutes something like that but today he is actually using herbicides so herbicides are what you use to protect the crop against weeds and then you get pesticides too which are like for insects and stuff like that and also you can get growth um, regulators which are usually used for wheat and barley we don't use them but these sprays are so important when we're on about the harrows earlier you're trying to get that extra five percent of the crop whereas spraying you're probably saving crop that you would lose but you're saving a hell of a lot like if you have an inf infestation of like nettles and docks and stuff you dramatically decrease the yield of the crop and the quality of the crop so by spraying it's such a crucial role to get done. Like some people will not think too much about spraying in grassland, but here on the farm, as we're trying to get the highest quality crop possible, which is one of those things that has to be done. And if you go through any field on our farm, 
when they've been harvested you'll be lucky to find any weeds in any of the crops but yeah back to harrowing guys we're literally on the last couple of runs it has taken me no time to do this field like i said with a sprayer because the harrows are quite um, wide they get across land in no time even the roller that's 12 foot wide so four meters this is six foot no it's not six foot this is six meters so it gets a lot through the land quite quick whereas we had an old set which was literally the width of the tractor and they um, take forever but what we'll do we'll just stop here and we'll have a quick talk about the job that's um, been done with the harrows today are you coming joe are you coming too good girl boy it is nice to get out in the fresh air after being in the cab but Looking through this is an absolute great job and what I wanted it to do. So if we come down here, you will see where the tines, so I'll show you the tines first, just in case you didn't see them properly. This is what the harrows actually look like from behind. So these are the spike tines that go into the ground and they're attached with, through chains. So what happens, these dig into the ground, as you can see there, and they make marks just like this in the ground. Can you see the mark there? marks there and basically it's pulling all this dead grass out and leaving the fresh grass to grow through um, and on top of that we're on about the muck as well and if you look down here any bits of muck have been nicely spread out so all these have been shredded up you can see they're not in big chunks anymore they're in nice little chunks and the muck has actually been freshened up again so it's all cracked open spread across you can actually see some of the fur here so dad's um thirted basically the whole farm we are going to do a video on it don't worry guys um and it's doing absolute wonderful job but it actually probably looks worse now than when i came into it you can see all the dead bits of grass on top but this is an absolute cracking job it will let that fresh grass just come through and nicely come and grow through i'm actually quite impressed how well the job that's done yeah. good girl good girl 